So you have this warehouse that you work out of and then you have two other ones yeah. full of stuff. One of these machines sell for if it's all fixed up and- 80, 100. Brookload uh, Australia, which is a wholesale guy. It's like $150,000 worth of stuff. Let's step over into number 308. Hey guys, so this video is going to be a little different. We are actually on vacation right now, um, visiting family in Washington State, and we're going to go visit my Uncle Don's warehouse. He is a reseller, but he's a little different than your typical reseller. He sells very niche items um, and very expensive large items. So the rest of this video is going to be a tour of his warehouse and we'll talk to him a little bit um so stay tuned for that also make sure you like the video subscribe to our channel all that stuff um and if you like this kind of content let me know in the comments all right we made it to don's warehouse got my uncle dean my uncle don this is what it looks like so you have this warehouse that you work out of and then you have two other ones yeah. full of stuff he'll take you over so what before we go over there real quick what is this this is a line on okay what kind of stuff do you sell it's all stuff to do with rebuilding motors okay these are so like, like this is a line home. Like this is a CNC machine? No, this is a cylinder home for like okay. honing a block. You see the one out there? That's a cylinder home also. Yeah. And then like that one right behind you right there, that's a seat and guide machine for doing, working on cylinder heads. Okay. So is that one and so is that one. So do you, you repair them fully before you ship them out or do yeah. you? And you got it one going to Australia, you said? You got a 40 truck container, load. yeah, like 10 machines. Yeah. Interesting. So it's like me selling on eBay, but just way bigger scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same theory. What do you yeah, use? But see, you don't, but see, mine's real specialized. Yeah. I don't do any do you repair? Do you repair? Just like stuff? small electronics. Minus yeah, minus. cameras and stuff like that, but. Well, yeah, it's Nothing that, worth the kind of money this is, you know. The same, uh, yeah, but we're not being real smart at the moment. It's we're paying way too much in where you start stock. Yeah. Like right now, I'm spending almost eleven thousand dollars a month storing. Yeah. We're trying to get rid of those two over there so that we just have this. Because him and I can only use this one. Yeah. Well, if I didn't live a thousand miles away, I'd help you, but. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> so what do you, when you ship stuff, do you use like U-Ship or Uber Freight or how do you ship stuff I overseas? I have a broker. Okay. So, so like our stuff ships, like if it's a big, so let's just say I'm going to ship like this machine. Yeah. This machine would go on a flatbed, like a semi truck mm -hmm. because it's too big can't go in a van yeah so if we ship something smaller let's say we're going to ship like that green machine right there the valve grinder mm -hmm. we would crate that and we would ship it ltl mm -hmm. um but you can't ship something like this ltl because this is wider than the inside of the van yeah so big stuff like this gets shipped on a semi truck gotcha. Semi. gotcha and i have a broker that does all of that and it gets to the port and broker deals with well, all that this, stuff? No, that stuff would be all in the U.S. Okay. Um, like our Australian one yeah. is a different company. So they bring a, literally bring a container here uh -huh. and we load the container while it's on the truck. So it's like, we got to fill it up, secure it. And then they drive off and take it to the Do you the have port. a loading dock or do you no. have use all forklift? All forklift, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right, let's go look. Yeah. Come on, Georgia, let's go for the more. Okay, these are the 
the CV machines, you know, the, the cylinder boring machines. Yeah. Those, these, they're here, the nice teeth. Some of them are for heads, you know, doing cylinder heads. Mm -hmm. Do you buy them all, like, broken and fix them all up, or do you ever Pretty buy them where they're... Do like 10, 10, 20 cents on the dollar. Yeah. Some of them, you it's kind of like gambling. Um, like them new machines, he's, him and his buddy or, or his partner are about a whole load of that mm -hmm. shit. 40 foot container. It's Chinese shit. But, all right, like this stuff is Carmack. So bingy. But so it's way cheaper. Yeah. And some of it didn't really pencil out. I usually think pencil out fast. How many big machines do you think you guys have? What do you want to say here? Five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, probably forty in this shop. Oh, there's one, two, three, four, five, ten. Yeah, I'd say so. Fifteen, twenty. There's probably 30, 35 ones in here. Let's step over into number 308. So you guys definitely... But look at this. There's 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. 20, 22, 25 machines in this box. So you guys definitely but, specialize in like a few different certain I've kind I've been of told, Doug, by, by people in the room in the that Don's one of five people in the world that does what he did. Yeah. And what does one of these machines sell for if it's all fixed up? And... 80, 100. So this warehouse, the other one is basically just storage. And then well, the other one's where you the work out of. Broke his foot, but he just broke his foot, so he's been out of the game. But he would basically come over here and do his thing over here. Julian, there you go. That was kind of cool. Tore apart and repainted. So that there was brand new. Like, if I came across one of these machines, I would have no idea where to even start on, like, let alone fixing it, but like how to sell it, you know? Oh, yeah, that's a niche. It's kind of a specialized thing. It's a niche. Kind of a weird thing, but it works. Dean said all the ones you buy are usually like. You get them real cheap because they're broken, and then you fix them up. Yeah. Do you just have like a network of people that'll call you when they have machines, yeah, or? That, so I did a lot of uh, like people are going out of business, and you buy by the whole shop mm -hmm. because people either died or retired or something. But the problem, I've been trying to avoid that because you end up with storing a bunch of you sell the good. Mm -hmm. And then you end up storing the shit. I'm more into trying to buy like one or two pieces here or there um, that I know is going to sell. So, a lot of this tooling comes in on these machines too. That it kind of got it. You kind of got to understand the machine. Yeah. Because if you don't get the tooling that belongs with the machine, you can pay way too much for it. And, you're kind of hoped. Because the tooling costs a lot, a lot of times as much as the f machine did. Yeah. So what, like, just for people that might be watching this video, what do you usually pay for, like, a machine? I, I'm sure it depends on what it is, but what do you usually pay for one? What, what do you... condition one of these? What's, what do you sell this for? So, what do you sell them for? Like, what do, you, what do you get for, like, that truckload you send to Australia? So that's like a, a truckload to Australia, which is a wholesale guy. He's I've dealt with him for like 15 years. It's like $150,000 worth of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I sell it to him wholesale. The rule of thumb for me to buy this stuff is to double my money. Yeah. But so like, we just did a late model of one of these Rottler CNC cylinder homes. 
and I paid 55 for it and I sold it for 105 so it can't really and we got a little bit of expense but can't really double your money on that mm -hmm. but it's a late one and a new one's like 165 so yeah but the rule of thumb like this stuff is double my money if I pay for five for it I need to sell for ten and that's just kind of the rule of thumb how many big machines do you move like a month just a pen yeah. 40 every month. He's moving it from here to there, from there yeah. to here. <laughs> so, like last year, I did gross sales, no, net sales, 1.4 million. I mean, that includes my little couple of Yeah. You know, we probably move, I don't know, we got to move 30, 40 a year. I mean, this container load that's going to Australia is going to be about nine machines, but it's been going on for over a year now. Like, it's weird. He doesn't normally wait that long, but he's paid for everything. Yeah. But he wa and he he watches the dollar exchange because oh, well, because he's in Australia. So he really watches and he'll pay me our want like to literally send me money if the exchange is good. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, that's kind of good of him. So yeah, there's a lot of that kind of stuff, but I'm, this year, I got under control because and I'm, a lot of that stuff just sitting there. Yeah. I mean, it just... But I assume when you get calls to buy more stuff, you want to buy it just to keep, you know, if that relationship and... Yeah. Yeah. And if it's good stuff. It's yeah. Pretty, I mean, pretty warm, actually. So, like this one, we actually we rebuilt that one. That one, Dean. So, that one's ready to go out right there? Almost. I got a little bit left to do. That all about power because Dean General got took it over to his powder coating, powder coating buddy. Yeah, it looks like it's brand new. Yeah, it, we went through it completely. Yeah. It's definitely interesting. Kind of a different little thing. It's his own little world. There's not yeah. too many people doing it, so it's kind of a little tiny world yeah. that he lives in. It's not only here, but... <laughs> <laughs> Even I put up with on a daily basis, between me and my brother. First, we got to go through it. Yeah. So you might as well take this screen we got to take and make sure we're clean down there and this thing i got to make you a tool list so we can make sure that everything is with each oh i know what you got to do there's one of these in the back the white one we have to paint it green and not paint the inside there's a brand new one of those in the back in there yeah, and it goes with one of the green machines is it better put it green and call it good no because it's got decals and stuff inside of it You got that color green. So Don, like the one that's finished over there, how much time did that take you? Way too much. Yeah. There's no money. There's no money in it. I've had that thing for probably over two years. Yeah. And I probably got I think I probably paid four or five for it and I probably got five or more in it. And I'll probably get like twenty one out of it. it. it's too much. I don't have enough people working for me to be able to process that and get it out of here. Better to do like the one I just did for 105. Uh -huh. We don't have one day. Really? Yeah. But you can't find that stuff all the time. Yeah. My problem is I like fixing. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. And guess what? I like fixing it, but that's not where the money's at. Yeah. See this? What? He goes, okay, turn this green. Got another one? Okay. So then, yeah, see, it's got a decal in it. We can't, we can't. No, we're just going to paint it green. Just paint the outside of it green. Yeah. It's fine. That's all. But we got to do that. That's got to go with one of the green ones. That's brand new. So, like, 
the smaller stuff you say you have at your house, you sell on eBay. Right. That would be like the tools to work on this stuff, or do you sell parts off of like these machines? No, it would be like the parts you probably keep to make a. Yeah, a lot of it is. A lot of it is tooling for like that seat and guiding machine. They have a whole bunch of tooling that'll do all kinds of different heads. There is some tooling that I sell for like this one here that's made in China. All that, most of the new stuff that I do from home is made in China. Gotcha. That's pretty good margin stuff too. The uh, thing I told you, so like I buy a, I buy a carbide pilot for that. I pay like $55 for it. And I sell it for like one thirty-five, one thirty. I mean, but I got you know I probably got a couple. I don't know. Probably got one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in inventory. Yeah. And it doesn't all move. Oh, we know how that goes. Yeah. So you kind of gotta kind of gotta watch that. But that's pretty good money stuff right there. Well, I'll get out of your hair. Hey, we'll probably see you later. Take all the pictures yeah. you want. Appreciate you letting me film. I think this is going to be like an interesting video because there's not a lot of... You have to send it. You don't see a lot of resellers, you know, is which is kind of what you are, I guess. You know, you are you sell on eBay and stuff. and exactly. Buy and flip it, but you don't see this kind of stuff, you know. No. Very often in our... In, it's mostly like... Especially the people I watch, it's all going to garage sales and thrift stores and... Don, what are, uh, do you take pictures of those? Those are rod machines? Is that what those are? Yeah, those... Up there. Those don't, so... And those are only, what, 2500 bucks? Yeah. That would be my biggest sale ever on eBay if I sold yeah, one of them. Nice. 2500 <laughs> I sold one thing for 2300 that was... That was my max so you far. Make pretty good margin on all this. Well, I paid twenty bucks for it. <laughs> yeah, that's good margin. But yeah, that's a good margin. We like that. Yeah. All righty. All right, we'll see you next. Appreciate it. Ooh. Uh, I think tonight. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they're going to Costco today. Thanks for the tour, Dean. Later, guys.